This is one of those times when I find myself putting off making a video because maybe I was enjoying the product a little too much. I mean, a home theater with literally the biggest screen that I've ever had in my home tech life understandably captures my attention for hours on end. But as the first ever ultra short throw projector I have ever used, I also really wanted to dive into this new way for me to view and consume content. After a few weeks of having this laser TV in my home living room, I've definitely fallen in love, even if the beginning and the setup were quite the ordeal. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? I'm here to share with you my experience with my first ever ultra short throw projector, the Hisense L5G 4K Laser TV. Starting things off, as always, with a little bit of gratitude. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And as a disclaimer, Hisense did send me this entire set, the L5G and the ambient light rejecting 100 inch screen that is bundled with it. But because this is my first time ever using an ultra short throw projector, I wanted to give you my honest thoughts on the experience and thus this video is not sponsored. Hisense will sponsor an ad spot pretty soon, but they're seeing this video for the first time on my channel, just like you are. And finally, if you are convinced to check out the Hisense L5G for yourself, I have links to it and the bundled ALR screen in the description and in a pinned comment below. Back at CES, I remember being really enamored with the idea of a laser TV as a solution to having a home theater. Of course, I know projectors have been a solution to them for a long time now, but ultra short throw was new to me. And at the booth, they had many installations of their various short throw projectors providing high quality, vivid image, even with all of the ambient lights of the trade show floor. The offer to actually check out the L5G was met with a resounding and immediate yes. But now I have way more respect for the people who set up those high sense booths and those multiple laser TV installations. That's because in order to get an ultra short throw projector set up just right, there's a lot of work involved. Unlike a huge TV that you can just put on a stand, turn on, tweak a little in the picture settings and then go, the amount of time and effort needed to make this whole thing perfect can be rather labor intensive and tedious. I say this not as a deal breaker for projectors like this, but more as a small warning. You should just know what you're getting into before jumping into this kind of home theater setup. I mean, this is the instruction manual for the ambient light rejecting or ALR screen. Not only does the screen require delicate handling with things like gloves to ensure that the projection area doesn't get fingerprints or smudge, well, it has to be installed on the wall. That meant getting a stud finder and using a drill to make holes in them. Definitely a two person job at the very least. Luckily, my father and I only made like one small error that we could get past since the screen was gonna cover up one of those holes that we made. Uh, but after that, the bracket is then installed and then the screen hangs off of it. That's when some tedium begins. The projector goes basically right up against the same wall that the screen is mounted on, throwing the image up at an acute angle. Now, the L5G is a fixed focus projector, so its distance from the screen has to be pretty exact. That means moving every part of this setup, either forward or backward, to get the image to be the size of the ALR screen. Seems easy enough until you get a bit obsessive about any black lines that might appear on the top or bottom of the image. It's at that point that you can either use the metal rods that are behind the screen to finally adjust the bracket to raise or lower the screen Screen, and then you can use the feet that raise or lower the actual projector by screwing or unscrewing them accordingly. Aside from the hours it took to get the screen mounting done, I think I returned to those rods and those multiple feet multiple times in the following days because the image always seemed just a little bit off. So yes, it's a ton of setup to reach the point where the screen and the projector will just sit in their perfectly adjusted positions and then you can just enjoy. And enjoy I did. This L5G uses Hisense's X-Fusion laser engine, which is a blue light source instead of an an RGB source like some of their trichroma projectors. The image that is created exceeds the REC 709 standard and meets 83% of the DCI P3 color gamut. And with a powerful light source like this at 2700 lumens, I actually found viewing this even with a large window right next to it quite comfortable. Now, of course, it's still going to be most ideal to use the projector in lower light situations, like right now I'm filming this pretty late in the day. So ending the night with a show or a movie will likely be more common than like a daytime matinee. As far as colors are concerned, it's basically tuned just right for all kinds of content, but since it is coming out of just a blue light source, you might notice some darker areas have a slight blue hue to them. As opposed to a RGB source, where all the colors are rendered separately and on demand, the blue light source is doing all of the work by itself. Also, again, the bulb is super bright, so obviously no one should be looking right at it. There's a warning about it right on the projector, and there's actually a sensor on the unit that can tell when someone is close by. Uh, that will trigger a dimmer image, and then there's a five second count down after which the light will turn off completely for safety. Now, despite its incredible brightness, the bulb is also rated to last for 25,000 hours. 
In terms of hardware, the projector is outfitted with most of the extras that you would want, even down to an impressive set of 30-watt speakers. The speakers are also Dolby Atmos capable. If you don't have any other audio products, the built-in speakers can work well enough, I guess. But like with most TVs or home theater setups, a separate speaker or soundbar will of course be a welcome upgrade. In my case, the soundbar that I would normally put right onto the TV stand wouldn't fit because the L5G actually takes up most of that space. So it's below the TV stand, at least for now. It's kind of in a nice spot, actually. You definitely want to have big sound to match the big scene, so do what you can. Three HDMI ports on the rear provide plenty of connectivity. One of them allows for eARC connection, so that's taken up by the soundbar for an immediate connection. The two other ports are HDMI 2.1, so enhanced HDMI processing is possible there for game consoles and external smart TV dongles or sticks. Now that brings me to the included software. Hisense has a full Android TV suite installed on here, making it a one-stop shop for almost all of the apps and content that you might want to have on the big screen. Now I say almost because I don't know if you can tell here, but there is one service that is missing. Netflix. If you follow projectors or even smart TVs from Asian brands, this might not be much of a surprise to you. But for those of you that aren't aware, sometimes brands do not have the rights or the DRM license to have Netflix on their products. Given that I'm all about Korean dramas lately, this was a bit of a bummer. Of course, the easy workaround is to just plug something into the HDMI connections that have Netflix, like the Chromecast or even a game console. Aside from that one issue, the pre-installed OS and the interface are totally fine, allowing for easy switching of content and access to the Google Play Store where you can find available apps, services, or even games and game streaming. This remote is easy to use for navigation, and there's also a microphone on here to access the Google Assistant, so you can actually use this as not just a smart TV, but also as a smart assistant. Okay, now let's just go ahead and play some stuff and have some fun. As I mentioned before, the image coming from the L5G is pretty spectacular, and it's hard not to feel that way when it's 100 inches large. Settings can be adjusted to make the image exactly what you want it to be, from color temperature to motion smoothing, and as far as motion smoothing is concerned, I keep it at film because I don't want that like soap opera look all the time. And when using HDMI sources, turning on the enhanced format setting opens up the ability for HDR capable content to trigger the projector's HDR10 rendering. That's a lot of jargon, but personally, I've just had no major complaints with the image coming out of the L5G. The 4K resolution keeps everything looking highly detailed, and the brightness means that there's a ton of room for adjustments to be noticeable and impactful. So let's move on to another use case. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has ever thought this before, but have you ever looked at a theater screen and wished you could play some of your favorite games on it? Well, the L5G and the Ultra Short Throw Projector are kind of like that, so it can basically be a reality. And man, is it a blast. Hardcore gamers do need to understand that this is a 60 hertz image, so high frame rate and high refresh rate gaming won't be on the menu here, but for most general gamers, this will cover the vast majority of experiences. Now, to be honest, I haven't really been doing a ton of gaming lately, I've just been too busy, but being able to do it on such a huge screen makes it a treat every time I can. And for the kind of gamer I am, like not competitive, usually playing uh, single player story driven games, this whole setup is just right. But what I mentioned before about darker scenes applies here, especially in games like Horizon Zero Dawn. In daytime ambient light, it's no surprise that dark games and the scenes within them are harder to comfortably play because it's just harder to see everything. So like with general viewing, night time gaming is going to be most ideal. So like with most projectors, the Hisense L5G has its quirks and its best case scenarios. But what I have to give the ultra short throw projector a ton of props for is how we can manage to bridge some of those gaps. Even regular high end projectors can be hard to enjoy during morning or afternoon hours, but it's possible to just sit and watch things on the L5G well before dinner time. And the setup, while very involved at the start, ends up taking less room than other home theater setups. Technically still more than like just a large standalone TV, mind you, but still something that doesn't have to go too far beyond the wall that you're trying to look at. And it's certainly something that effectively brings that theater experience into the home, setting the stage for a living area that my family and I are happy to end the day at, whether we're watching shows, movies, or even the local news. And when I do find the time, catching up on games hasn't been nearly as immersive on other screens as it is right here. So despite what it asks you to consider and the effort to put in, I think the L5G was a perfect introduction into ultra short throw projectors, and I'm more than happy to make it a permanent part of my content consumption experience. Simply put, it's just big, big fun. For more on home theater tech like the Hisense L5G and beyond in the world of tech, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Sound off by hitting the like button and by getting into the comment sections down below. From here though, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody. Now get out of here. I have the last episode of Extraordinary Attorney Woo to watch.